Thank you, Jean-Michel. Thank you, thank you for uh, Mr. Thierry for your invitation. The uh, the French Development Agency strategy is very simple. We can summarize. We summarize that in two words. We said, "All Africa." That is many things. That is in. That means that we are going to make the maximum of what we can do in Africa, which is about 50% of our capacity. We have about 500 staff who are present in all countries. This means that we have to stop, to cut Africa into two parts, that is North Africa and Sub-Saharan Africa. Before coming here, I was looking for the most recent figures about the GDP of Africa, and then I was looking at the documents of the International Monetary Fund, and there we find MENA and Sub-Saharan Africa, and we cannot actually add, they do not add up with a simple calculation. On the other hand, we still have our own institutions, we still have our development agencies and diplomacies and international institutions, except the African institutions such as the African Development Bank and the African Union. We still have this um, division between the two parts of Africa. This is something that, uh, that should be overcome, and we should look at Africa as a whole as an emerging continent. And uh, I have looked at these figures, and the figures that relate to Africa, uh, this is more than more than 250 billion uh, billions of GDP and more than 2 billion inhabitants and these are figures that apply to India. We have said that uh, Africa is Switzerland and Sweden. No, uh, we can say that Africa is India. Let me interrupt, interrupt you. Um, during 15 years, uh, the GD African GDP has actually uh, increased from the, uh, the level of the GDP of Belgium to that of France. This this could be Africa, this could be India, or the United Kingdom, who was actually doubting the emergence of India and uh, its uh, um, ranking in the world and the global economy. And if we consider the whole map of Africa, we can see that uh, there are sub-regions, and we can see also the movement uh, of uh, different populations who are not moving from south to the north, but they move from the north also to the south. And we can also see the different strategies and the investments of the uh, main actors. And we have heard uh, the message of uh, the king who talked only about Africa. And I think that we have to change our lenses in order to uh, be able uh, to uh, go hand in hand with the very the very important Moroccan actors. I was yesterday with Mazin, with the CDG, and with you, Mr. Fatourab, and your movement in Africa is very strong. And we are going to try uh, to adopt that and to implement it. What is more interesting for us is this very situation that is the the uh, role of Morocco in the regional integration and the resumption of this role and uh, in the coming month Morocco will adhere to the uh, CDAO and the ECOWAS actually and uh, we have and we can also uh, uh, see the that the map of the continent will be changed. And uh, we have talked about uh, demography. This is something which is very patient for me. It is, uh, we have about 100 million of Africans, but by the beginning of the 20th century, now we have 1 billion and 200 million Africans. And this is something which uh, be continuing with the uh, speed, with the increase of the genes and employment and activity and growth. And of course, this is something which is encouraging us all. And this is the innovative potential that we can notice. We all travel all around Africa. We 
whenever I travel to Africa, I come back with an idea, with an innovation. Uh, there is an example I was with the, um, uh, the Minister of National Education. Higher education is at the heart of the development of France. And we were talking about education. And uh, they he told me that the professors in uh, Senegal, they are inspected using the uh, tablets. And therefore, we can have a camera and we can see what is happening in the class and then we give a grade and if uh, what if we do that in France well I want to say that whenever I move to Africa I can find some examples that are very pertinent and very precious what is disturbing me in the present situation you have talked about this dual crisis in Africa we have the Sahel uh, crisis and we have the Central African crisis. These are for me linked because the international community should um, question this matter. We have a macroeconomic uh, crisis. We have about 50% uh, of the fiscal income that uh, vanishes and I think that uh, the international community is getting mobilized. I am also disturbed by the fact uh, of the existence of the security crisis that is uh, impacting on the Sahel, something that we do not integrate in our uh, equation. And this is also one of the consequences of dividing Africa into two. I think that we have forgotten the Sahel um, for um, many decades. And it is still there in the international institutions. And we have not injected enough means and tools in uh, and support uh, for the sub-Saharan Africa. I think uh, that we need a sort of alliance for the Sahel. And we need to involve all the partners and all the stakeholders. And I think that we have to change things. The last point that is very disturbing for me is that we do not move very quickly towards what we call the, the uh, non-sovereign uh, funding. When we say that this funding is not sovereign, this means that uh, uh, we have a frame of reference, which is the sovereign um, funding. That is, we have to fund the government. Well, we can overcome the challenges of Africa uh, if we move towards other entities that are able uh, to invest and uh, to take loans. And this is the private uh, sector, the local governments, and also the NGOs. And we are not moving very quickly for this purpose. And our uh, public uh, instruments and the multilateral conventions and agreements are not yet oriented towards uh, this type of movement. Uh, therefore, we have a sort of a, a paradoxical situation in Africa. We have uh, the public debt which emerges in difficult areas and uh, that would represent uh, in the private sector about one third of the GDP. I would like to say in the end that we are changing things. We are increasing our investments and we are activating that uh, with regard to the support and the aid that we give. This is done by uh, with the Germans. Uh, uh, this is through the European Investment Fund that will be uh, presented in Abidjan in the Europe and African Summit. And we are doing that with all the new actors from the South and with all the Southern Development Banks. And this is done with our colleagues in JICA and in the IDFC, International Development mm -hmm. Finance Group club of whom I am the president, which is made up of uh, local and international banks, uh, Chinese, Indonesians, sub, uh, South Africans, Brazilians, and so forth. These are the means and tools that will be able to mobilize the private sector and to answer and to react to the challenges that we are facing. Thank you very much indeed.